Welcome to Common Core Geometry, January 2018. Here are all your part one answers. I'm going to do a lot better than that. I'm going to go through all 35 questions and make sure that you know what you're doing for your exam. Number one, in the diagram below, a sequence of rigid motions, math, G, B, C, D, onto J, K, L, M. Well, what that's telling you is that A, B, C, D is congruent to J, K, L, M. So, if angle A is 82, I know that since A corresponds to J, J is also going to be 82. I know that angle B is 104. So if angle B is 104, then angle K is also 104. I know that angle L is 121. Since L is 121, that means that C is going to be 121. And finally, it's asking for the measure of angle M. Well, I have the angles of a quadrilateral. The angles of a quadrilateral add to equal 360. So I'm going to do 82 plus 104 plus 121 plus x equals 360. I'm going to do the math. I got 307 plus x equals 360. Subtract 307 from both sides. x equals 53. That's it. Moving on, number two, parallelogram hand is drawn below with value of HN and AD intersecting an S. Which statement is always true? Well, I'm going to go through these choice. Choice one is saying that HN is half of AD. So these are the diagonals. This is saying that one diagonal is half of the other. I don't know that property. I know that the diagonals bisect each other. But that's about it. They're not congruent in a parallelogram. So we got AF is half of AD. AF is half of AD. Yes, since the diagonals bisect each other, AF will be half of AD. I'm going to go through the rest of the choices to check those out. I've got angle AHF is congruent to angle ANS. Well, those are not open interior angles. They're close to being open interior angles. They're same side interior angles. So those are congruent. And finally, choice four. I've got HDS and I've got NDS. Well, those would be congruent if the diagonals bisect the angles, but no. The diagonals do not quite take the angles of a parallelogram. In a realm, it's a square that they do, but not in a parallelogram. Please use your hands. Any questions? Oh, wait. You can't ask me any questions because you're at home or on your phone somewhere, and I recorded this a long time ago. Number three, the graph shows two congruent triangles, ABC and ABC prime. Which rigid motion would map triangle ABC and the triangle ABC prime? Well, we can go through each one and see which one it is. Hopefully, by looking at it, you can see. Now, there's actually a really easy way to do this. What I would tell my students is, when identifying rigid motions, check for orientation. If you check for orientation, you're going to have your answer. This one, my letters, if I go clockwise from A or ABC, this one from A, RECB, which means the orientation is different. If the orientation is different, the only rigid motion that does not preserve orientation is a line reflection. Is a line reflection one of my choices? Yes, choice four. And it's a reflection of the line y equals x because if I were to draw the line y equals x, if you don't know what the line y equals x is, well, too bad. Hopefully you can see the reflection. Move along. A man was parasailing above a lake at an angle of elevation of 32 degrees from a boat as modeled in the diagram below. Next time you go parasailing, let's hope that nobody makes a math problem out of you. 
at 129.5 meters of cable. That's in the picture already. Okay, to the boat, to the parasail, approximately how many meters above the lake was the man? How many meters above the lake? You need to put an X on what you're trying to find. It's a right triangle problem. There's an angle involved, Sokotoa. If you don't know Sokotoa, don't even bother showing us your test. We're not going to pass this thing if you can't do Sokotoa. It's not difficult. Learn how to do it. If you don't know how to do it, learn it. It's very important. So, I'm going to label my A, my O, and my H. I start with my H, that's my hypotenuse. My angle always connects my H to my A. My opposite is opposite. Out of A, O, and H, which two are involved? O, H, sine. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Theta in this example is 32. Opposite is x. Hypotenuse is 129.5. Cross multiply, since I'm finding the sine, I like to type sine of 32 into the calculator and get a decimal. Um, you don't have to do that. You could just cross multiply and solve now. 129.5 times 32 equals x. You type that into the calculator, you get 68.6. Know how to do so, we tell it in all seriousness. It's not that difficult, but you can know how to do it. A right hexagonal prism is shown below. A two-dimensional cross-section that is perpendicular to the base. Perpendicular to the base means vertical. He's taken from the prism. They asked this exact question on an earlier readings exam. Which figure describes a two-dimensional cross-section? It's a two-dimensional slice of a three-dimensional object. If it's going vertically, if I take that vertical slice, that's a rectangle. If I were to take a horizontal slice, it's not asking this, but if I were to take a horizontal slice, the horizontal cross-section would be the hexagon. The base is always the horizontal cross-section. Moving right along. This is a pretty nice exam so far. I, do, I go over these problems over and over and over again. If you're one of my students, you better get this question correct. I call these partition problems. There are many different ways to do partitions. I don't care which way you do it. Just do it right. Delta X and delta Y over P, where P is the number of partitions. Since there are a total of three pieces, my P is three. To find delta x and delta y, I count. You can subtract, I like to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Nine for x, twelve for y. Again, you can also subtract the x values, subtract the y values, but half the students can't subtract, so I like to count. That gives me three and four. So now I'm going to count from A. I'm going to count 1, 2, 3 in the x direction, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the y direction. 1, 2, 3 in the x direction, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the y direction, 1, 2, 3 in the x direction, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the y direction. I'm starting at A, so this is my first, my second, and my third point. You look at which number comes first, the 1. The coordinates of that point are negative 2, negative 2. Very easy, very straightforward question. No excuse to get that one correct, other than you didn't prepare correctly. So, let's take a look at number 7. We've got an ice cream waffle cone can be modeled by a right circular cone with a base diameter of 6.6. .6. Volume of 54.5. We're talking about the volume of a cone. It's run on your reference sheet. The volume of a cone is one third pi r squared each. The volume is 54.45 pi equals one third pi. It's kind of the diameter is 6.6. .6, so the radius is half of the diameter. The radius is half of 6.6. .6 which is 
times a pipe. There are a couple of ways to solve this thing. The easiest thing to do, I would say, if you just divide both sides by one third by 3.3 squared, you'll have your answer. Normally, I'd say multiply by the denominator to get the fraction to cancel out, but one step, you're done. You put it to the calculator, you get your answer. Make sure you use alpha y equals enter. If you do not use alpha y equals enter, learn how to do alpha y equals enter. Your teacher is like 72 and still know what that is. Ask a different teacher. Um, make it interesting for yourself. Enjoy. Eight, the vertices of the triangle PQR coordinates P, Q, and R, under which transformation of triangle PQR are distance and angle measure preserved. What preserves distance and angle measure? Rigid motion. They are all rigid motions except for are you answering to yourself right now? You need to know they are all at rigid motions except for dilation. They all preserve a congruent figure except for dilation. And a dilation is where you're multiplying. Which one is multiplication? Well, they're all multiplication. This one's multiplication, so that is not going to preserve it. That's multiplication. That's not going to preserve it. That multiplication. That's not going to preserve it. Choice four will. This is the translation. You're adding. Dilations do not preserve distance of angle measure. They preserve angle measure, but not distance. This one was kind of mean. So we have a linear pair here, and we know that linear pairs add to 180. So if this out here is 180 minus 3x, if it's the supplement of this, it makes sense. From here, it's just the angles of a triangle. The angles of a triangle add to equal 180. So it's 3. It is 3. Oh, I think froze. Bear with me. All right, so we're back. The computer's not the best. In fact, are we still frozen? Maybe. Let's try this. Yep, we're good. We're good. We're good. All right. So, oh, there's only three. 3x plus 6x minus 40 plus x plus 20 equals 180. I do the algebra, I get 10x minus 20 equals 180, 10x equals 200. You folks, you too who have been hit already, could become a math teacher someday. X is 20, angle BAC, the vertex is A, angle BAC is 3x, 3 times 20 is 60. When it's 60, you put 20, make sure that you sub it in and you answer the question. A lot of students do not read. Please read. Reading is good. Circle O is centered at the origin. Okay. In the diagram below, a quarter of circle O is graphed. Which three-dimensional figure is generated when the quarter circle is continuously rotated about the y-axis? 3D rotations. To do a 3D rotation, reflect in two dimensions over what you're rotating around. So if I'm reflecting over the y-axis, it's going to look something like that. After you reflect it in two dimensions, you connect it with a curve. What shape is that? Looks like a cereal bowl. I kind of want my chocolate lucky charms right now. Like I said, I'm going to do number 11. Rectangle ABCD prime is the image of rectangle ABCD after a dilation centered at point A. Dilation, here's what you need to know. If you dilate something, let's see, rectangle ABCD has a perimeter that is two thirds of the perimeter of rectangle ABCD. Rectangle, all right, so what I would do is I would draw a picture here and we'll clearly see what's going on. 
A, B, C, D, and then I'm multiplying it by a scale factor of two thirds, so it's going to get smaller. A, B, C, D. Rectangle A, B, C, D prime has a perimeter that is two thirds the perimeter of rectangle A, B, C, D. Well, that sounds good to me. The scale factor, the ratio of the corresponding sides is the same as the ratio of the perimeters. Rectangle A, B, C, D prime is a perimeter over two. No, it's, it's, it's smaller, it's not bigger. Area, the ratio of the corresponding side is not the same as the ratio of the areas. So what you need to know for this question, the ratio of the corresponding sides is equal to the ratio of the perimeters and the ratio of corresponding sides squared is equal to the ratio of the areas. It would be correct if this said 2 squared over 3 squared, which would be 4 over 2. The answer is choice. Number 12. Oh, no way to do this question. There's no excuse. Every single one says, ask this. To put it in center radius form, I need to complete the square twice. So I'm going to start by writing all my x's together. x squared minus 6x plus y squared plus 2y. And I want my constants on the other side. Time to complete the square. I'm going to add my square to create a perfect square trinomial for each. For the x, for either one of them, you're always doing b over 2 squared to determine what goes inside. So for my x's, it's negative 6 over 2 squared, which is 9. And for my y's, it is 2 over 2 squared, which is 1. Next step, back to the trinomial. It's going to always be the square root of this number, and it's going to always be half of your b value. It's also, if you know how to factor, just factor. I can combine my right hand side, that's going to give me 16. Next step, rewrite it as a binomial squared. x minus 3 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 16. Now that I have it in such a radius form, I negate what's in the parentheses for my center. If there is no parentheses, the coordinates are zero. That's not the case here. And the radius is the square root of the right hand side. In this case, four. Center is three, negative one. Radius is four. Make sure you read the questions carefully and choose the right one. Number 13. Candy corn bases separate if there are no bases. Put the top over top, side over side, and the bottom over bottom. Yes, I have geometry songs. You can check that out under my channel as well. The bases are involved. I call these candy corn problems because it looks like those gross candies get around Halloween time. The bases are involved. We're going to separate my triangles. I got triangle C, D, E. I got triangle C, A, B. The small one, I got 15X. I got 40 for A, B. And A, E, A, C, excuse me, this whole side is 24. Now that I have it set up, it's pretty easy to create my proportion. I put my corresponding pieces on top of each other. Yes, there is more than one correct way to set this up. I like to always put my corresponding pieces on top of each other. Cross multiply and solve. 24x equals 600. Divide by 24. 25. X is 25. It's a very straightforward exam. I think it's the most straightforward exam has been. Since the state usually does a pretty awful job making tests, they said, you know what? It takes time to start making it a little bit more fair. The line whose equation is, is dilated. Line dilations parallel keep the slope. Whenever you're dilating a line, the image is parallel, it has the same slope. So it cannot be different slopes. 
as far as if it has the same wife or stuff or not, it depends if the center of dilation is on the line. It's centered at the origin. Is the origin on the line? Well, let's test it out. The easiest way to do that, I believe, is to just substitute 0, 0 into the equation of the line. 0 does not equal 4. His center is not on the line. Therefore, the y-intercept will be different. 14 is choice 1. Again, for line dilations, you need to understand that the if it's always parallel, which means the slopes are always the same. If the center of dilation is on the line, the wider step is the same as well. If the image is the same as the original. If it's not, then it will change, and you have to mess around the scale factor for that. Which transformation would not carry a square into itself? Yep, I'm going to have to go through all four choices. I'm going to draw four squares. Let's see, you guys can tell me which square did I draw the best. Choice two, I drew pretty poorly. Three's pretty good. I think three is the best. A reflection over one of its diagonals. A reflection maps it onto itself if the reflection is a line of symmetry. Is the reflection a line of symmetry? Yes, that one will map it onto itself. A 90, a 90, a 90 degree rotation clockwise about its center. Yes, if I turn it about its center, 90 degrees will map it onto itself. A 180 degree rotation about one of its vertices. If I take this vertice and I rotate this 180, it's going to end up over here. No. A reflection over the perpendicular bisector of one side. Well, the perpendicular bisector of one side would be that. That's a line of symmetry. That works. Choice three will not map onto itself. Even if a lot of those questions. And circle M below, diameter AC, chord D, B, and BC, blah, blah, blah. For circle problems, the key is to describe angles. I don't even know if that's going to be the case for this particular question. But in general, when you see these circle problems, whether it's proofs or problems, look for inscribed angles. Which statement is not true? Triangle ABC is a right triangle. Well, have inscribed angle at B. It's inscribed to a semicircle, which makes it a right angle. So yes, it's a right triangle. Triangle ABM is isosceles. Well, ABM, I have a radius here, I have a radius here, radii are congruent, therefore, yes, ABM is isosceles. Choice three, arc BC is equal to angle BMC. Well, angle BMC is not an inscribed angle, it's a central angle, and central angles are equal to the intercepted arc, so yes, they're congruent. Finally, choice four, the measure of arc AB is half the measure of angle ACB. Well, close, other way around. The angle is half of the arc, but the arc is not half of the angle. The angle is always the smaller one of the two. The angle is half of the arc. Choice four is your answer. In the diagram below, excess and blah, 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 which statement is always true. Well, I see, to me, this looks like, I shouldn't have said blah, 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 I should look at this more clearly. In the diagram below, x, s, and y are intersected z. This is a proof question. I got vertical angles. I've got perpendicular. So I've got right angles. I don't have anything with sides. So because I have angle, angle, I know that these triangles are similar. So, nothing, I cannot say that any of the sides are congruent, I cannot say that the triangles are congruent, and basically at this point, you're asked to prove a proportion or multiplication. 
So I'm going to take a look at this proportion and see if this proportion holds true. I'm also going to redraw my triangles a little bit more clearly so I can see what's going on. So it does not matter what they look like if I'm checking to see if the proportion holds true. X, Y, Z, F, R, Z. When I check to see if the proportion is true, one direction should correspond, the other direction should be in the same triangle. It does not matter which is which. X, Y, and Y, Z checks out because they're in the same triangle. F, R, and R, Z checks out because they're in the same triangle. X, Y, and S, R check out because they correspond. Y, Z, and R, Z check out because they correspond. Yes, everything is good here. This is correct. Now, for choice one, you have to kind of go a little bit backwards here. Do I have space to go backwards somewhere? Uh, yeah, I'll find some space Let's over here. If it's giving you that xy times sr equals xz times rz, we can work backwards into a proportion of this came from. So, because it's xy times sr, they must be diagonal from each other. And xz and rz must be diagonal from each other, frozen. We're back. I think. So again, I'm going backwards to the proportion. X, Z, and R, Z should be opposite from each other. And now I'm going to test this proportion. So I test this proportion. <clears throat> X, Y, and R, Z. X, Y, R, Z. They don't correspond. Therefore, that proportion is not correct. Your answer is choice four. They tested a few concepts in that question. I kind of like this, but it's kind of a difficult question. I got parallel lines. When I have parallel lines and they're cut by a transversal, I know I have some open interior angles, the corresponding angles, and some other stuff. BF and EF are also congruent. If BF and EF are congruent. Then it'll be angles opposite that work congruent as well. CBF is 42.5. Well, if CBF is 42.5, I've got alternate interior angles here. So this one's 42.5. I know that these two angles are congruent. So I'm going to call them both X. I have angles of a triangle. X plus X plus 42.5 equals 180. I do the algebra. I got 2x plus 42.5 equals 180 minus 42.5 minus 42.5. 2x equals 137.5 divided by 2. Algebra is good. 68.7. So we have to utilize alternate interior angles. You also have to utilize your isosceles triangle. <clears throat> a parallelogram must be a rhombus if the wording confuses students. Basically, it's asking, how do you prove a rhombus? So I'm going to draw a rhombus, and I'm going to see which of these things proves a rhombus. Now, there's three ways to prove a rhombus once you have a parallelogram. There's consecutive sides congruent, there's diagonals congruent, there's diagonals that bisect the angles, and there's diagonals perpendicular to each other. So, are the diagonals congruent? No. The diagonals bisect each other does not make it a rhombus, it makes it a parallelogram. The diagonals do not bisect its angles? No. They do bisect the angles. The diagonals are perpendicular to each other? Yes. In a rhombus, they're perpendicular to each other. In a parallelogram, they are not perpendicular to each other. Choice four. 
you need to know the ways to prove your different shapes. Rectangle, congruent diagonals, or right angles. Rhombus, consecutive sides congruent. Diagonals, 550 angles. Diagonals, perpendicular. And square, one of the things from rectangle, one of the things from rhombus. What is an equation of a line which passes through 6, 9? It's perpendicular to the line whose equation is. This is a harder version of a simple question. Perpendicular, which you see perpendicular, negative reciprocal slopes. So I need to find the slope of this line. I got to do some algebra to get from that point. 4x minus 6y equals 15. Minus 4x minus 4x. Negative 6y equals negative 4x plus 15. I think this is a little unnecessary. All the algebra in this question. 2 thirds x minus 2.5. So the slope of this line is 2 thirds. So the slope of my line, my perpendicular line, is a negative reciprocal of that. Flip it and negate it, negative 3 over 2. So it can't be choice 2 or choice 4. From here, they put the answers in slope in um, point slope form. I don't use point slope form for my kids. So um, I'm going to do it the way I would do it. Although if you do no point slope form, then you would just sub into that at this point. Now that I have my M, I need to find my B. So I have X and Y here. X is 6. Y is 9. So I'm going to sub into Y equals MX plus B. Y is 9. M is negative 3. M. X is 6 plus B. 9 equals negative 9 plus B plus 9 plus 9. 18 equals B. So Y equals negative 3 halves X plus 18. That's the equation of my line. However, I don't see that as a choice because they're not in that form. So let's say create more space for myself here. I'm going to take each choice. And I'm going to put it into slope intercept form. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I know that the answer is choice number one, so I'm going to show you why. If I have y minus 9 equals negative 3 halves x minus 6, and I distribute, that's uh, plus 9. Add 9 to both sides. Y equals negative 3 halves x plus 18. Yes, it's right there. They've done point, they've done point slope a couple of times. Um, it's good to know point slope and slope intercepts. I made a choice of my students to stick to um, slope intercepts, and that one might be a little more challenging. This question is pretty simple if you know a rule. The opposite angles in this picture. Opposite angles, let's pull this of an inscribed parallelogram. My supplementary. The answer one eighty. So I can look at this. 80 plus y plus 30 equals 180. Y is 70. And then I can do the same thing with these. 75 plus x minus 10 equals 180. I do the algebra. Yeah, there is a lot of algebra in geometry. Yes, it might be confusing to someone who thinks the course is called geometry. Your answer is choice. If you know that rule is pretty simple, it's a more roundabout way to do it. Um, I can quickly mention it to you. So if this inscribed angle is 80, then arc 
C, must be double that. And if that red arc is 160, then the rest of this arc must together add to 360, which makes that 200, which makes Y plus 30 half of that, which is 100, and then it can go that way. Longer, but it does make sense. A regular pyramid at the square base. Congratulations on your square base, regular pyramid. Let's draw a picture. I'm going to warn you right now, my pyramids are awful. I just draw a square, and then I make it pointy, and then I draw some lines. The perimeter of the base is 36. Well, if the perimeter of the base is 36, and the square, I can divide it by 4, and that means that each side is not. The height of the pyramid is 15. Again, let's see how this looks in my picture. Where's the volume? Well, the reference sheet puts that stupid B on there, but what you need to know is that it's one third length times width times height. And my length and width, because the square are both 9, and my height is 15, and I put that into my calculator, and it tells me that the answer is 405. Know how to do volume. Volume is a lot of points in the previous exam. Tell staff, you need to recognize this picture. It's kind of laying on its side. It's still a hill staff picture. If you don't know how to do hill staff, learn how to do it real quick. Um, it's asking for B seat. You need to ask yourself is there an L involved or an A involved? There's an L involved right here. So it's hill. You need to know what each letter represents. H is the hypotenuse of the big triangle, which is 12. Over L is X equals L is X over S is, well, to this segment. Because the whole thing is 12 and the other piece is E, it must be 4. We cross multiply and solve. I get X squared equals 48. I keep the square root of both sides. I get X equals radical 48. Well, I don't see that there. I'm going to have to simplify that radical. And algebra skill. I have my students write out their perfect squares 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. What's the largest perfect square that goes into 48? Well, it can't be bigger than 48. You can't divide it by 36. You can't divide it by 25. Yes, 16 goes in. 16 times 3. Take the square root of your perfect square for radical 3. If you watch me reduce a radical, it's not going to do much for you. If you can't reduce radicals, if you can't do this, ask somebody for help. This is a difficult question, as number 24 usually is a difficult question. The concept is not difficult, but the way it is. OC is 4, OE is 6. Which relation between the length of arc EF? Length of arc. Arc length is sort. So it wants me to look at arc EF, and it wants me to look at arc CD. Okay, so I'm going to do sore for both of them. So the blue one, this is going to be uh, arc CD over here. And then this one's going to be RPF. I don't know theta. All I know is R, which is 6. So F equals 6 theta. Here, all I know is the radius. F equals theta times 4. F equals 4 theta. What's the relationship between the length of RPF and the length of RCD? Well, if I do a ratio of EF over CD, that's going to be 6 theta over 4 theta, which is 6 over 4, which is 1.5. How would you know to do that? Because if you get this question right without guessing, then you're really smart and you think outside the box. Otherwise, it's a challenging question. Proofs! 
You have multiple options. Of, I, I was expecting this. I keep it really simple with the parallelogram property proof. They keep it really simple. They want you to prove the triangles are congruent. It's pretty obvious which triangles I'm proving here. It's telling you the product, it's a parallelogram. You really have a lot of options. I will do my proof. And then afterwards, I will give you some additional options as well. Um, I'm going to start with, I'm going to do the easiest things. The main properties of the parallelogram, and again, I'm just going to see that it's a parallelogram by given. Parallelogram ABCD. Given. I know that a parallelogram has two pairs of opposite sides congruent. So I've got AB is congruent to BC. I also know that AD is congruent to BC because a parallelogram has CBA based on the things that I chose to prove. I got SSF. This can go into SSF. This is the I can't remember the I can't remember any time I get the two-point triangle proof. And it's because it is a very simple proof if you understand your parallelogram properties, which you should better being able to prove triangles. Your other options, a parallelogram has opposite angles congruent. A parallelogram, oops, it's frozen. That was very rude being interrupted in the middle of a sentence like that. We've got opposite angles congruent. We've got alternate interior angles congruent as well. Moving on. I am not going to do the construction because I don't have the tools to do the construction for you here. I will tell you that to do a square inscribed in a circle, you are going to do the perpendicular bisector of the diameter. If you want more than that, then go look it up. You're on YouTube already. Given right triangle ABC with right angle C. As sine A increases, does cosine B increase? Sine A equals cosine B. A plus B equals 90. That's what you need to know. The sine of one acute angle is equal to the cosine of the other acute angle, and the two acute angles add to equal 90. In this case, it's talking about this concept. Since they're equal, as sine A increases, cosine B increases because sine A equals cosine. Very easy, simple question. We reset it, we finish our multiple choice, they got really hard. Open responses, very straightforward and simple so far. Theta pi r squared over 16. Oh, it's a song for all this stuff. Check out my playlist, Common Core Geometry Song. It's going to help you. It's giving me the area of the unshaded sector. That's super mean. So, you've got a couple of options here. What I'm thinking is I'm going to just find the area of the shaded sector. Shaded sectors 
by defining the area of the whole circle and subtract. The area of a whole circle is pi r squared, pi times 25 squared, that's 625 pi. So to find the area of the shaded region, get the area of the whole minus the area of the non-shaded. So the area of the shaded is 625 pi minus 500 pi, which is 125. So because it's giving me the area of the sector, I'm going to replace A with 125 pi. Theta is what... I, I think I'm hiding the question somewhere, but the uh, I believe it's asking for theta. Let's check my copy here. Yep, it's asking for theta. The so radius is 25 over 360. I'm just going to erase this to create myself some more space. They always ask this question of area of the sector. Sometimes you define the area of the sector, sometimes they give it to you and you do some algebra. So to solve this now, I'm going to cross multiply and solve. I get 625 pi theta equals 360 times 25 is something. Three sixty times one twenty five is forty five thousand five. The solve for theta, I'm going to divide by six hundred and twenty five pi. Pi is cancel, and theta equals. Theta equals 45,000 divided by 625. I did a different on my answer key, so I got a little flustered there, but it's all good. Um, it was a simple concept to twist. And a lot of times in the area of the sector, they do make it a little more complicated than it needs to be. Number 29. Who thinks they can pronounce that word? Machinist, I think? I don't know. A machinist creates a solid steel part for a wild turbine engine. I'm sorry, a wind turbine engine. Congratulations, machinist. The part is a volume of 1,015 cubic centimeters. These used to be the six point questions. Now it's giving you the volume. It's that you have to calculate the volume. Steel can be purchased for 29 cents per kilogram at the density of. 795 grams per cubic centimeter. Well, right now I have cubic centimeter. It's giving me the density. I have the formula for density is mass over volume. Density 7.95 equals mass. I'm trying to find the fine over volume is 1015. I cross multiply and solve. I get M equals 8069.25. Grams. Well, great, but they want the cost in kilograms. So I have to take that 8,069.25 grams and I have to convert it to kilograms. There are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. I do 8069.25 divided by 1,000. It gives me 8.06. Nine two five kilograms. So the cost is twenty nine cents per kilogram. So cost equals cost times whatever is the cost of. In this case, mass. The cost is twenty nine 
plus is 0.29 times 8.06925. The plus is um, 0.29, I got 2.34. I'm not going to round to the very end. I want to make 500 of those, so I multiply that 2.34 by 500, and I get as my answer 1,170. I feel like they took the easiest part of these questions, find the volume, and they left the more difficult parts, the conversions, and the density, and the cost. But just take a look at each piece and just roll with it. In the graph below, a triangle ABC has coordinates, triangle RST has coordinates. Are they congruent? This is the one time ever that they've asked it where the question is no. They're not congruent. What corresponds here? ST corresponds to CB. Are they congruent? Well, let's find the distance of ST and let's find the distance of CB. Distance equals radical. The way I do it is delta x squared plus delta y squared. You can subtract the x's. Same thing. I like to count. One, two, three. One, two, three. 3 squared plus 3 squared equals radical 18. CB, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals radical 25, which is 5. Are they congruent? No. CB is not congruent to ST. Because they don't have the same distance. A rigid motion. Therefore, it was not a rigid motion. Therefore, it's not producing congruency. Bob places an 18-foot ladder six feet from the base of his house. He's got this beautiful greenhouse with a teepee on top, apparently. Has an 18-foot ladder leaning on it. So this is a ladder, and the ladder is 18 feet. And it's six feet from the base of his house. Well, there's the base of his house. There's the ladder. There's your six. Draw a picture, draw it accurately to help see what's going on. Find from the nearest degree to measure the angle, the bottom of the ladder, made to the ground. That was this. All right, this is our second Sokotoa question. Angle and bottle, H, A, O. We have A and H involved. So let's just write up our Sokotoa. So. Cosine, cosine theta equals a over h, cosine x equals 6 over 18. Now, because I'm finding the angle, I need to get rid of cosine, I do inverse cosine. x equals inverse cosine of 6 over 18. Please make sure you're in degree mode. If you're not in degree mode, you're losing a lot of points. Um, I got as my answer. 71 degrees. Also, make sure you round correctly. If you don't round correctly, it's going to be rough. You're going to throw away a lot of points by rounding incorrectly. 
All right, we're up to the four corners. Describe the transformation that maps triangle ABC of the triangle ABE. Well, first of all, these are not congruent, obviously, which means the only transformation that could possibly do this would be a dilation. So, reason to say specifically what the dilation is, what it's centered at. So, which is my image, which is my original? It says map triangle ABC of the triangle ABE. So we're going to dilate triangle ABC centered at, well, since point A is invariant, this has got to be the center of dilation. So centered at point A. And you need to see the scale factor. By a scale factor, of, well, to find scale factor, scale factor is the image over the original. So pick any pair of corresponding sides. Again, the image is a DE. So that's a little I up here for image. This is my original. So image over original could be a D over a D. It didn't have to be AD over AD. It could have been EC, I'm sorry, EA over CA. It could have been D over DC. Any image over original. Explain why the transformation makes them similar. A dilation preserves angle measure producing a similar a storage tank is in the shape of a cylinder with a tennis sphere on the top yep I can see that the highest point on the inside of the storage tank is 13 I can see that uh, everything is telling me in the picture, it wants the volume. So to find the volume, they call this compound volume. I have to find the volume of both shapes. I have to find the volume of the cylinder. I'm frozen. Let's see if I can get faster at pausing this thing. That was smooth. All right, we got the cylinder. We've got the hemisphere. You better know your formulas. They're on the reference sheet for the most part. Bees. Not bees, with bees, with capital B. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Pi R squared H for cylinder, one half, four thirds, pi R cubed. For the hemisphere, you can put it over two instead of times a half, whatever works for you. Here's the twist. If the diameter at the bottom is 8, and the diameter at the top is 8, which means the radius is 4, which means that this is 4. So, if from here to here is 4, then the height of the cylinder is 9. That's the twist it's from. Other than that, it's a super simple four point question. So, for the cylinder, I got B equals pi four squared times nine. For the hemisphere, I got one half four thirds pi four cubed. Uh, it wants the answer to the cubic meter, so yes, you will type fine. I got for the cylinder. 452 and change. So what I write is 452 dot dot dot. Your teacher might make you write the entire thing out. Um, I'm using that in the calculator for that computation, but I'm not writing the whole thing out. 134 dot dot dot. To find the volume of the entire thing, I'm doing my 452 dot 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 plus my 134 dot 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 equals 586 
leaders of Jesus. That's a big sword thing. All right. We're almost done. I like this test, by the way. I really hope uh, right now I'm recording this just before the June 2018 exam. And I would love for the June 2018 exam to be just like this. This is a, a gift of a four point question, and this is the eighth point you're going to get from knowing how to do basic soap and soap. Everything's in the picture. First question is saying the terminus gate to the nearest tenth of a mile, the distance from the boathouse H to I. H to I is what it's asking for. Again, so you tell them, label your A, your O, and your H. There is an A and H involved, so it's K. The cosine of theta equals A over H. Theta is 54. A is 4.5. H is X. From here, I'm going to cross multiply and solve. X cosine of 54 equals 4.5 divided by X cosine of 54. Again, you might want to meet cosine of 54 to a decimal to make it a little bit easier on you. Make sure you round the appropriate value near as 10. Now, it wants me to find the distance from I to M. I'll call this Y. You've got two options. You can do Sokotoa again, or you can do Pythagorean theorem. Let's mix it up. We haven't done Pythagorean theorem yet. Because I have two sides and I want to find the third, I can use Pythagorean theorem. Again, I can use Sokotoa again, but I don't have to. So, my legs are A and B. That's going to be 4.5 squared plus x squared equals 7.7 7 squared. 4.5 squared, of course, my answer key, I did it the other way. So, I will do it live. 4.5 squared is 20.25. I could pull my calculator, but you know, it doesn't take so long. It equals 7.7 7 squared is 59.29. I do the math because you know that's what we do on a math test. We do math. Ideally, x squared is 39.04, square root of both sides. And I get 4.5 squared is 1250. Real simple, real straightforward four-point question. Which brings us to a real simple, real straightforward six-point question. In the coordinate plane, the vertices of triangle hat are negative one, negative six, negative four, five, five, negative two. I should probably use a straight edge, but it's, it's a little difficult. So I'm going to do this by hand, and it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Do you want me to prove an isosceles triangle? Well, you have to know how to prove it's an isosceles triangle. For core geometry proofs, I would do three steps. Step one, if they want you to prove it. Triangle path is isosceles because you need to know how to prove all of your different shapes, your triangles, your parallelograms, rhombus squares, rectangles, trapezoids. You need to know it. Kind of isosceles because it has two congruent sides. So now I'm going to find the two congruent sides. By looking at it, it's pretty obvious to me that it's going to be AP and AT. So I'm going to find the distance of AP. I'm going to find the distance of AT. I'm going to use my distance formula, which I wrote up before. My distance is radical delta x squared plus delta y squared. I count. You can uh, subtract if you want. I'm going to count. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Three squared plus eleven squared 
8, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh-oh, they look different. But... show they're the same distance, I'm going to state that they're congruent. AP is congruent to AP because they have the same distance. State the coordinates of R so that quadrilateral part is a parallelogram. Well, if it's a parallelogram and it's P, A, R, T, it's got to be somewhere in this region here. So to figure out exactly where it is, well, it's got to be parallel to PT. So PT is left 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. Does that look right? Yep. I'll be able to check that out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yep. There's my parallelogram. Now, they want me to prove that it's a parallelogram. Let me make sure I state the coordinates before I lose any points. The coordinates at that point are two comma nine. Now, they want me to prove it's a parallelogram. Well, let's erase. Again, you need to know how to prove a parallelogram. There's no excuse for not getting these points. Part is a parallelogram because it has two pairs of opposite. for everything, with the exception of traffic I have my students distance for everything, that way they know it's always distance. You do have multiple options, though. You can do outside parallel, then I will five to each other, what else? So, to show that it has two pairs of opposite sides congruent, and to find the distance of AR, and to find the distance of RT, and to find the distance of P, and to find the distance of PA. They are, I already found that before, I think, maybe not, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 36 plus 16, that's 52, RT, I've got 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, that's what I did before. So you don't have to do it twice, but again, I'm a little tight on space here. Skip that step. TP is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where I have 52. And PA, I believe I found that before as well. That was your 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I see that I have my two pairs of opposite sides congruent. Your third step is tell me that they're congruent. I got AR 
is congruent to T and R T is congruent to PA because they have the same difference. That's a wrap. Hopefully I got 100 on it. Not easy to do to get 100 of these New York City exams. My name is Mr. Schlansky. I do do private tutoring in Nassau and Suffolk County. In case anybody wants some private help with this, I'd be happy to help you out. I want my students to use this. I got like 31,000 views on one of my videos. I don't think any of those 31,000 people are my students, so come on, my students. Let's start utilizing all this work I'm doing for you. And enjoy. Practice, practice, practice. You are not going to do all this exam just by watching this video alone. You need to practice the problems. Utilize my songs. They're on my YouTube channel as well. And practice, practice, practice. Then you can enjoy the rest of your summer. Let's hope this video actually recorded. And I will get back to you soon with another video.